Hey guys, Jason here with a crazy, ridiculous new surprise for you guys this week, as well as a series of new features that I think you guys are going to really like, so stick around. So, for starters, over the holidays, I had a lot of time to tinker. Now, when I get time to tinker, strange things happen, guys. Really weird stuff happens. Uh, I did take a few days off of LaunchBox development over the holidays, over New Year's, over Christmas. I ended up tinkering with my old MS-DOS machines, uh, getting a bunch of games to run. I was playing with a bunch of old menu systems to try and figure out the best interface to use in strict DOS. I didn't want to use Windows. I wanted a good menu launcher interface for all my games in DOS. Now naturally, since I am a developer and I'm practically obsessed with development, I started thinking about, okay, how can I build an interface like this in DOS? Started looking into some old DOS programming manuals and books and all this crap and within a couple of days, I had built myself the beginnings of LaunchBox for MS-DOS. Ridiculous, I know, all right? Completely ridiculous. So this was made basically to be on a physical DOS machine. It does work on DOSBox as well, but it's kind of silly to use it on DOSBox. It's made for literally an old school DOS machine so that you can run this thing on DOS and easily access all your games. So let's show it off here. And you guys can decide for yourself whether this is something that you actually want to use. So obviously, because I don't have a good way to record my old DOS machines without sticking a video camera in front of the screen, we are going to use DOSBox for this quick demo. All right. So here is LaunchBox for MS-DOS Special Edition. Insane. I know. I think I'm nuts just like you guys do. But this is LaunchBox for MS-DOS. And uh, you can do everything here. I mean, it's, it's just straight up. It's a simple interface. Really, really simple. We have insert. We have change. We have delete. Move up and move down. Um, and then the only other stuff is help about and file exit. So we can go and insert. Um, I know I haven't added TIE Fighter yet. So we'll browse. And we'll go down to TIE Fight and TIE.exe. We'll call the game Star Wars TIE Fighter. If I could type okay and it'll show up there and of course we can move this up and down uh, with shortcut keys and stuff and organize your games that way and this is really it the neat thing about this app though is it's not memory resident which is important for DOS games basically it uses a batch file in the background to relaunch LaunchBox after the game quits um, so this will fire off your games and it won't run in the background when the games are running, which is very important for DOS games. And then when the when the game is done, it will, we will load back up with this interface. So it's really simple, really easy to use. But it's funny, you know, I've, I've played with a lot of old MS-DOS menu systems, and they all suck for some reason. So this is the literally the best thing I've, I've found. So I'm, I'm happy to have built it, even if it is in 2017. One more thing about LaunchBox for MS-DOS Special Edition 1.0. There are a series of Easter eggs in this app. So if that is your thing, please do download it. The link is in the description and play with it. Uh, I'm also going to put a link in the description to a forum post so you guys can screw around with it and discuss it. And, you know, I might put out version 1.1 at some point if we find a series of bugs or something that needs replaced. But anyways, that is the... Stupid, ridiculous, fun surprise for this week. Uh, like I said, this came up over the holidays. It's not like I'm wasting development time on something stupid like this. But I wanted a break. I wanted to build something different. And so here you go. More importantly, let's exit out of LaunchBox for MS-DOS Special Edition. And back into LaunchBox. And we have been working on audits, if you've been paying attention in the last couple weeks. Audits are now in a usable place. I do want to get them out there relatively soon. I'm planning on spending the next week on bug fixes, and then we're going to actually release an official version. It will be 7.5, and we are going to include audits with it. Now, let me show you these audits. This is actually really tremendously useful 
uh, and we've attempted to make it as easy as possible for people. So, for example, if we go down to, let's start with Sega Genesis. Okay, we select Sega Genesis here, and we go to Tools, Audit Sega Genesis. Now, it's going to take a moment or two to populate all the information. Should only take a few seconds, uh, unless you're on a platform like Arcade that has thousands of games. Then it might take a minute or so. Uh, I have put a lot of work into speeding this up as quick as it can possibly be. Also, keep in mind, I've blown things up here quite a bit for YouTube to make it easier to view this stuff on YouTube. It does look a lot better, and it's a lot easier to use with the smaller text on your actual computer. So, this is what you get here. We have our title on the left. You have the ability to select multiple games um, and do various things with those games. Right now, we have Edit, Delete. This is Batch Edits, basically. Download metadata. Uh, you can refresh the list, and you can hide specific games from the list. But more importantly, we have a whole bunch of columns here with very cool data. You get your file path. You get something that specifies whether a game is a duplicate. Uh, you get region information, revision version information. You'll notice that uh, uh, some of these have version numbers on them and revision information on them. You get developer, publisher. And of course, you can sort by every single one of these columns. You get genre, play mode, status, release date. Whether the game is unlicensed, you'll notice in my collection here, I have uh, just a few unlicensed games. Uh, the video path, so you can check to see what, what games have videos and what games don't. Now, currently in my collection, every single game is a video. You have theme video path. You have music path, so we can see what games have music and what games don't. And then your images. So, for... Uh, this Russell War game here, we can click on a, a particular front box link, and you'll, you'll see I have two images for this. So we can go correct that simply by going in and, and editing the game, which is just as easy as either clicking this link or right-clicking and edit, which will do the same thing. So lots and lots of cool functionality in here, and this will really give you a lot more control over your collection. Another thing is... You notice this unlicensed um, column here. There are a lot more columns that will show up depending on the type of ROMs that you have in your, or games that you have in your collection. Uh, the file names here, you'll notice the, the every single file name has different extensions. We have World, USA. These aren't extensions. They're, they're things in parentheses, basically. Um, and so all this information, the, revi the revision version, the unlicensed are all coming from the file name now if we load up a different platform um, let's say Nintendo 64 and we'll audit Nintendo 64 give it a second we will have some different uh, columns showing up we still have the revision version because that exists here for my for these particular ROMs and then we have something called verified and verified in this case means it's got the exclamation point in the file name, uh, which is part of, I think it's TOSEC. Uh, it's their definition. Basically means it's a perfect ROM. It's a confirmed good ROM, um, and you don't have to worry about the quality of it. So depending on the type of data that is in the file names for your ROMs, uh, we do recommend using no intro. Um, and then also TOSEC can be useful as well, although you're going to have a lot of extra stuff in the TOSEC releases. Anyways... Uh, depending on the files that you have, the type of ROMs you have in your collection, it attempts to use all that information and give it to you in an easy-to-use format. So, for example, here we're looking at, at our Nintendo 64 collection. Let's say we don't really want any uh, European games. For some reason, we just only want North American games. We can easily say, see that uh, these are the games that are Europe, and we can easily remove them right here just by saying delete. Okay. Um, for example, let's say we don't want any sports games. We can easily filter by sports or puzzle or whatever, you, whatever else you want, and we can get rid of those. Uh, we have play mode, of course. And, you know, so there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, or in the case of verified, we can go up and check to see which ROMs are not verified, and we can mark those and get those deleted. Now, one thing I haven't showed you is a duplicates detection system. 
Now, I might have some trouble finding some duplicates, but I'm going to go into NES here. And I'm going to go to Tools, Audit Nintendo Entertainment System. And give it a second. This might take a little bit longer than some of the other ones because it's a little bit bigger of a system. But it should. There it is. So relatively quick. I don't know if I have any duplicates in here for... I do have some duplicates for NES. So you'll notice that I have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in here twice. One of them is from Taito, uh, released by Taito, and the other one's released by Ubisoft or Ubisoft, however you say their name. So it will help you identify all those duplicates and easily get rid of the one you want, uh, which is really, really helpful. Uh, in the future, we, we're planning on adding some additional features to automatically be able to select all the duplicates and prioritize which ones you want over the previous ones. So that kind of stuff is coming, but that probably won't happen for the for the for this next official release. But that is coming as well. So all kinds of potential here. A lot of help uh, is thrown your way with this. You have a lot more control over your collection and what is in your collection. Uh, if you, for example, wanted to import uh, an entire platform of games you can import that entire platform of games not do any not download any images or any media and then go through and audit this stuff to remove all the stuff that you don't want you don't need and then you can go download the images for that stuff later on and that'll save you a lot of download time uh, and it'll it'll give yourself a, a much cleaner collection uh, I know when I when I uh, add a system I end up wanting to get rid of all the uh, you know, Japanese games that I can't understand and stuff like that. Now we have columns um, that will show up for translation. Uh, so for example, let's see what else we got in Nintendo Entertainment System here. Um, I do have series. I have unlicensed. Looks like there's not a whole lot more information in NES in my, in my set. But there's a lot more different columns that will show up. We have prototype. We have uh, translation. Uh, trainer, stuff like that will show up as well. And of course, for MAME, we have a bunch of them that will show up as well for the various types of MAME games, such as, you know, casino games and mature games. So you can filter out all those as well. So really useful stuff. Uh, in the future, we do plan on adding a lot of these features to the import process itself. Uh, but that probably won't be out for the official release either. Like I said, my, my goal right now is to fix any any outstanding bugs with this and then anything else we, has been found since 7.4. And then we're going to put out 7.5. So that's exciting with these, uh, with these uh, auditing features. And of course, right now, as it stands, the auditing features are available for you guys to download right now in the latest beta. But you will need the beta release. Um, I'll put a link to how to get to the betas in the description. Thank you, guys. That's it for this week. Uh, I hope you guys have fun with LaunchBox for MS-DOS and have fun and have a lot of useful times with the new auditing features. Thank you guys. I love working with you guys on this stuff. I love what I'm doing day in, day out. So thank you guys so much for your support once more. And I will talk to you guys next week.